welcome to another edition of Gateways to Glendale College. I'm your host, Deb Kenley, and today we have Stella... Say your last name? Stella Faytek. Stella Faytek. That's an interesting name. And we're here at the Adult Recreation Center for the city of Glendale. And Stella, you're going to introduce our guest. Yes, I am. It's my pleasure to introduce my guest, Judy Springborn. Judy is a very special lady. She is uh, profoundly uh, hearing impaired, and she has lectured to my classes before. She has a very interesting story, and she has someone very very special with her, and her name is Apple Pie. Judy, tell us about yourself and, Ju- and Apple Pie. Good morning, a- Judy. Apple Pie is a certified hearing dog who came from Dogs for the Deaf in Oregon. Uh, this organization rescues all of their dogs from shelters mm-hmm. and places them all around the United States and in Canada, I believe, Alaska, Puerto Rico. Um, the uh, Apple is my second hearing dog. I had a dog named Freedom for 14 years. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was profoundly deaf. And the a hearing dog will work sounds for me. The doorbell, the smoke alarm, somebody knocking at the back door, the oven buzzer, things of this sort, the alarm clock. And um, with with Apple Pie... I, 10 years ago, I had a, a cochlear implant. So right now, I am both reading your lips and I get some sound from the implant. Okay. Um, the apple pie is most helpful, most necessary for me at nighttime because at nighttime I hear nothing at all. Mm-hmm. And if there were a disturbance, especially a smoke alarm and the house alarm going off, she would wake me up. So. Tell me if I'm correct. When the doorbell rings or the the oven chime goes off, she makes noise or lets you know. What does she do to let you know? Well, Apple, hop. That's right. She will come to my leg and put her paws on my leg. Hop. Good girl. <laughs> she works for food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised she's not overweight, but she must give her diet food. <laughs> oh, that, that was interesting. She can gain or lose three ounces. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. And how long have you had apple pie? About two years now. Okay. And she has been a blessing to me. Not only the companionship, but such a help. Mm-hmm. When I take her out in public... It notifies other people that I don't hear well. Mm, And so that is, and when I had freedom for the first time, it was like coming out of the closet Mm. to take him out, to go out with her in her uniform. Mm -hmm. And it's good publicity for people who never knew that there were hearing dogs. It's sort of like a guide dog, but it has a very, she has a very different function, it sounds like. She lends me in the ear. So that uh, it works out very well. And, and um, she is, um, she's, I was telling Stella when we went into the other room, she does a sweep. She always seems to be hungry. So that weight is something that I have to be careful with. Mm-hmm. And I have to maintain her training. That is part of the agreement. If at any time Dogs for the Deaf found that she had become only a pet, they could buy her back for $1. Oh, my goodness. So what does maintain her training mean? What does that mean? All obedience. So when she needs to heal, she needs to step right in, and she's sitting right now. Um, I don't discriminate a whole lot between sitting and and lying down because often the the floor is cold (laughs) and so but it functions she just stays where she's supposed to be i would imagine as with seeing eye dogs uh, since she's a service dog that exactly people should not really come up and try to be too friendly with her that's difficult for the public uh i think I would say the majority do not understand that when a service dog is wearing in uniform Mm -hmm. that they need to ask permission if they can interact. Mm -hmm. And a farmer's market, for instance, and it's it's very hard to turn children away. Mm -hmm. And somehow chihuahuas are 
so popular. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are a popular dog. Yes. I see many pictures of other people's chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> Online and elsewhere, I suppose. <laughs> right, but she she just behaves beautifully. We go to the farmer's market about once a week, and the people know her there, and we just trot along. And uh, sometimes I'm wishing for a third hand, but that's okay. <laughs> now, how long was the training for her before you adopted her? My understanding is that it is between four and six months of sound training mm-hmm. they have a um, they have a puppy program where volunteers will foster these dogs and begin the obedience training so once the obedience is taken care of mm-hmm. then they come to dogs with the deaf and receive all of their sound training and on that campus they have a two-story unit so that they, if they're moving the dog to a two-story home and the sound is upstairs or downstairs, the dog learns to find that sound. This business of hopping on my leg, that's only half of it. The oven buzzer goes off, so she comes and finds me. Then she has to take me to the sound because I wouldn't know if it's the doorbell or if it's the oven or if it's the smoke alarm. So she has to take me to the location. Interesting. Very interesting. these dogs can also do a name call. And so... What does that mean? If a friend comes to the back gate and calls my name in a special way, Judy, (laughs) then she would (laughs) respond to that. Okay. Yeah, you know what that is. Is that a special call that you must tell your friends to say it that way so that apple pie understands it? It is, because my name is often in conversation. And and if every time she heard it, uh, she was needing to come and get me. Uh, So changing it a little bit Mm -hmm. makes... I don't use that a whole lot because people usually come to our front door. Very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your story and apple pie. Our pleasure to be here. (laughs) How did she come by the name apple pie? It was a Mrs. Appleton in the Fresno shelter who recognized the traits of this little dog who was about to be euthanized. Mm. And she called Dogs for the Deaf and they came to check her out. So the trainer felt that Apple had to be part. Appleton had to be part. I was surprised by the name, and I thought, Pippin? <laughs> <laughs> but apple pie brings up lots of warm, warm thoughts, that's, especially that's for me. Right. <laughs> but confusion at our house, I have two apple trees, and I have a Macintosh. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it, how things work out? (laughs) Judy, was there ever a time that you can remember that uh, apple pie rescued you in a serious or dire situation? I would say that was more with Freedom's situation. Um, And because then uh, my hearing was far, far worse. Um, I'm not an an absolute um, emergency I know that this has happened, and I have heard about dogs who go beyond their training to to help, like find dad in the airport or um, and things of that sort. Uh-huh. Yeah. But continuous help and yeah. freedom was just, um, I was on duty almost all of the time because I, I could stand in front of the oven and I would not hear the buzzer. I was, I could not, uh, my hearing was very, very bad before the implant. Mm-hmm. But Dogs for the Deaf still places dogs with people with implants. Uh, that nighttime is very important. How long have you had your implant? Uh, about 10 years. And it was interesting, my husband was being diagnosed for Alzheimer's, Mm -hmm. and um, I had Freedom at the time. Freedom was losing his hearing. So he was losing his hearing, and mine got better. It was fortunate timing, (laughs) because I was having to take over all the family business, Mm -hmm. and I was never able to use the phone without a TDD. Mm -hmm. Um, I just depended entirely on lip reading. Um, but now I can, with difficulty, I can use the phone. I don't like it, but I can. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, 
thank you again for taking time to be with us this morning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Judy. Oh, okay. Bye-bye, apple pie. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we're going to take a little trip inside and meet some of the students in the chorus. Stella? Good morning, Deb. So <laughs> nice to have you here on this beautiful Monday morning. It's so very nice to be here. So you are an instructor here for a lip reading course. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, well, tell us about yourself, Stella, and how you come to be with Glendale College. Well, I've been um, with Glendale College adjunct faculty for at least, I think, 15 or 16 years now. And uh, I'm with the Center for Students with Disabilities. And in my capacity, I um, uh, test students for learning disabilities. And then we offer accommodations to help the student in his uh, educational career at the college. Um, then also, I am a uh, speech therapist. I have a degree in speech pathology. And as a result, I have um, taken over this class from another speech therapist. Um, I think we started this class maybe 15, 20 years ago. I've been teaching it for at least 12 years. Oh, my goodness. 12 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Okay. That, that's right. And we teach here at the Adult Recreation Center, but this is part of Glendale College's uh, public service to the community. There is no cost for this class. All a student needs to do is to register and get a valid ID number and Come to class, and I do the rest. Okay. Well, tell us about lip reading. What is it really? Well, lip reading is deciphering speech on the speaker's lips with whatever visual cues you have available to you. By that, I mean you look at the person's face. You look at facial expressions. <gasps> Well, you know that that's not someone saying, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. You're showing excitement, right? You look at body language. You look at the shape of the lips. You try to decipher what the words are that the speaker is trying to say. Lip reading is um, really an art. Come in and, and it's like learning another language. It's... Um, as I said, deciphering speech on the lips. The requirements for the class are a hearing aid and a um, audiogram produced by the audiologist who shows me that there is a, a definite hearing loss. Those are the only requirements for the class. Um, you so also, students must have a hearing aid in order to exactly, be enrolled in the class? Ex exactly. And there are so many things that go into lip reading. Uh, and you ask me, why, why do I teach it? It's a compensatory skill. Um, if perhaps your hearing aid has the battery's gone out, you may have missed a word or a phrase or a sentence. Perhaps you can pick it up on the lips. Now, I always tell my students the first day of class, um, I don't know why you're here, but don't expect magic. Uh, <laughs> I will not turn you into a spy, and the CIA is going to hire you to <laughs> tell us what that couple in the corner having dinner are talking about. But it's, it's a, a way of uh, enhancing your communication skills. So what does your typical student hope to accomplish? Uh, well, I would hope that they'll be able to pick up speech through lip reading and uh, become a little more proficient and get back into life. Because, you know, once a person loses his hearing, um, they tend maybe to isolate. They may be invited once or twice to, to a gathering, a seminar, a speech, an opera, and they decline to go because they say, well, why should I go? I can't hear. The second time they turn them down. You know what? People are not going to invite them a third and fourth time. And then that isolation, as, as my students know, I tell them, isolation leads to depression. And we all know depression leads to dementia and you know the rest. Mm -hmm. So the purposes of this class is to... Um, get a cohesive group of, of, of a support group. We, we're all friends in here. We hug each other when we see each other. And it's become a social group as well because we, goodness, we all have the same problem. We all have a hearing loss. Do you have a typical student? 
A typical student. Well, I can't say that because I have Eric, who is our baby of the class, and uh, he was born with a congenital hearing loss. We have um, Anne, who is my A1 student. She scares me because she can tell everything I'm, I'm saying. <laughs> and so it's, it's a cross-section of, uh, of students, all wonderful, wonderful people. Sure. And so, Stella, how long is the course? How long does it last? We run uh, the fall semester and the spring semester, 16 weeks. We have two sessions per week, Mondays and Thursdays, 9.30 till 11. Uh, we start out with a pre-test. I just want to see where people are, where their hearing level is. And then we have a post-test at the end of the semester. And most of the time, and the students are really surprised at this, their scores are improved. So... Whoopee, hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So how does a student enroll in the uh, lip reading they, course? They uh, assign online at Glendale Community College. They get an ID number, and that's all they need. And then they come to class, and I will we take attendance, and I uh, uh, register them on, on my en enrollment sheet, and um, that's it. And it's free of charge. That's wonderful. That's one. So how long did you say it lasts? The, the course, 16 weeks? 16 weeks. 16 the, weeks. The length of a semester. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so give me an idea of what a typical session is about. Well, uh, we do a lot more than lip read, as you, as you know. Um, if I were to teach lip reading straight for an hour and a half, I wouldn't have anybody sitting in this room. They'd all run away. <laughs> so what we do at first um, in the opening uh, part of the, cl of the uh, session, we... Uh, talk about what successes have we had since the last session. Maybe you were at the um, bank and the teller said something and your hearing aid didn't catch it, but you got it on the lips. Wow, that's a success. Even one word, that's a success. Okay, good. So, Very good. I understand that you have guest speakers sometimes. Yes. Tell me about some of your guest speakers. Yes, we do. Uh, you did um, see Judy Springborn with her hearing dog, Apple Pie. Uh, we have, um, last semester we had um, my colleague and friend, Ellen Nathan, who is a uh, hearing health um, uh, educator. Uh, hopefully, she'll be here soon. Then we had um, a priest from one of um, our Catholic churches here in Glendale who had a cochlear implant, and his mother at uh, age 80 had just had a cochlear implant as well. Uh, we have audiologists come to tell us uh, the, the different uh, hearing devices on the market today. Uh, so it's um, um, in, an interesting class, more than just lip reading. <laughs> it sounds like. <laughs> and so is there, is there any kind of equipment that you use or what kind of methods that you use? Yes. Well, uh, the students need to bring a notebook, um, a three-ring binder. They need to bring a mirror, a stand-up mirror. Actually, I usually give these to the students. Uh, one that stands up by itself so they can see the formation of the sounds on the lips. Uh, they need to bring um, a pen, naturally, and they have to have their glasses cleaned, their hearing aids working with <laughs> good batteries, new, bad, fresh batteries, <laughs> and a great sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you just a little bit about uh, the, the classes. Uh, I have uh, 18 topics that we s discuss every week, a new sound. And the first sounds that we start with are P, B, M. Now, these are called bilabials, two lips. They're made at the same position, and they're the most visible sounds on the lips. P, pop, B, ball, M. Mom. So if I said, and? Did mom eat the cat? Mom, no. <laughs> the Absolutely. The you see there? Thank you, Edel Drug. Good, good for you. Mom baked a cake. Now, the other, unfortunately, PBM are made in the same place. Done. 
Paul popped the balloon. Good job. <laughs> well, the last question I have is really not about the lip reading course. It's about someone you know and love very well, your son, Paul. What can you tell us about Paul? He's not a stranger to GCC. No, he is not. As a matter of fact, Paul and his wife, Denise, met at Hoover High School in Glendale. Mm -hmm. um, Paul and Denise have um, taken up mountain climbing um, on a very serious basis. Uh, they um, have uh, completed mountain climbing. Mountain climbing. <laughs> they successfully completed the seven summits on the seven continents in the world. Uh, culminating with climbing the top of Mount Everest, which is 29,000 feet. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and this is all for raising funds for Challenged Athletes Foundation. Over the years, they've raised over $100,000. Um, Paul, in his real world, he does have a job. He's managing director of a financial company uh, in um, mergers and acquisitions. Does he in, have a challenge, physical challenge? Paul does. Paul was born with brachial plexus palsy, which is uh, um, a right arm is paralyzed. So you can imagine how worried I was when he goes on these mm -hmm. um, mountain climbing expeditions. Sure. They've taken a, a several climbing groups to um, uh, Kathmandu. They've taken them to Africa. And now they're working on taking, um, I think, about 12 CEOs of local um, Orange County to base camp of Mount Everest. So he's busy training these CEOs and doing training hikes with them. And this is all um, raising funds for Challenge Athlete Foundation. And he also wrote a book, Steps to the Summit, and the proceeds of that book are all going to Challenge Athlete Foundation. But I must, I must, in all fairness, talk about Paul's sister, Tina, and her husband, <laughs> Tim, because Tina's also an athlete, and she will be doing her 14th Ironman triathlon oh in goodness. Cozumel, Mexico, with her husband, who this will be his third Iron Man, so I, I do have to say. Oh, yes, we must <laughs> give like Tina. time, yes, <laughs> to the siblings. Well, that's great information about your children. So if uh, I may just uh, close and leave you with this thought, remember your hearing is very precious. It will not regenerate itself like an, a broken nail. Once it's gone, it's gone, so treat it gently. Uh, we are seeing scary statistics numbers on young people losing their hearing so early. You know, with all the electronic devices that are on the market today, turn that sound down. You are putting that sound directly into your ear canal with no outside buffer. And, you know, 18, 17 year olds are losing their hearing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go to a concert where you know the music is going to be loud, please use ear protection because as I said, once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Stella. It's been a great morning, and I think now we're going to talk to some of our some of your students <laughs> and get their uh, feedback and input about the, thank the course. You, thank you. Thank you, Stella. Hello. Good morning. Hello. What's your name? My name is Henry Ray. Henry, so nice to meet you this morning. Why are you taking the lip reading course, sir? I'm taking this class because it enhances my ability to communicate in the community and with my friends and uh, particularly my girlfriend. Ah, your girlfriend. Okay, that's important. A lot of miscommunication. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And what has, what's been one thing you've learned from this course? Um, I'm coming here uh, because I have a problem of hearing. Mm -hmm. I'm come here to, to learn a little bit in that I can understand what people are saying to me. Uh, then I'm coming here. Great. What the, and your name? My name is Eric. Arik. Okay, yeah. very nice to meet you, Arik. He's been here a very short time. A short time? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And your name, ma'am? I'm Ann Arubio. Ann, very mm -hmm. nice to meet you, you this morning. I've been coming to this class for quite a while, and I enjoy Stella's class. She mm -hmm. She gets on so many subjects, and it's really more than a lip reading class. It's a really educational class. Mm -hmm. And I do it so I can understand people, not so much reading their lips, but when I do read their lips, it helps me to hear them better. 
Okay. I have some people that I'm thinking of recommending the class for. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Martha McDaniel. Martha. Uh, and I come to the class because it's very important to my life. Mm -hmm. I think people don't realize how important uh, your hearing is. Yes. Uh, there's safety factors. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, uh, social uh, uh, factors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I'm um, relegated to using the oxygen 24-7. Mm -hmm. My uh, uh, energy level is uh, uh, extremely low, but this is enough to get me out of bed, fill up the tank, get myself dressed, <laughs> get myself down here, find a parking place, uh, and it includes, uh, it includes the uh, social aspect so much. Yes, and you have a great haircut to boot. <laughs> I'm a Super short hair test. lady. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. Good morning. And your name? My name is Sue Ferguson. Sue. And I feel so uh, blessed to come to this class because I think in my 90, how old am I? 94 years. Oh, my goodness. I've never had a teacher like oh her goodness. because she teaches you lip reading, but she also makes it very interesting and fun mm -hmm. and I think she's one of the best teachers I've ever had in my life and I'm so grateful to this class. Thank it's very you. Helpful. It's very Thank good you. to hear that. Thank yeah, you. she sounds Thank very you. inspiring, yes, Stella. Stella, yes. And we all need a little inspiration. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm fine. Thank you. And so what brings you here to the lip reading course? Well, just to uh, get out off the couch <laughs> <laughs> and join all these wonderful people here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, as we get older, we tend to just sit back. And mm -hmm. but this is this is a fun class. After we have all of our lesson, we have a memory game sometimes mm -hmm. because, as well as a hearing loss, yes. we we uh, lose our. Uh, Sometimes. Memory. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm familiar with but that. But we play a, a game sometimes. Mm -hmm. What fits on a Ritz? <laughs> <laughs> what fits we on a Ritz? The class <laughs> and you have to remember what your partner said, and you try to remember oh, everything. <laughs> okay, and add on to all the things that fit on a Ritz. Okay, <laughs> very good. I play that kind of game in the car with trips with kids. <laughs> yes, I have too. <laughs> I'm going on a trip and what do we take? And then we just keep adding and uh -huh. it's a fun, fun uh -huh. game. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Quality of life sounds like a big theme that I'm hearing about, but what Qual brings you to the... Quality of life definitely is one. <laughs> okay. I tell you what, I'll read you what I wrote in my book because okay. I put a couple of those in and they are may maybe a little bit uh, funny. Okay. My hearing is also getting worse. You'd think that's just another curse, but consider what bliss all the bad news I now miss. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a couple of them, and I think that maybe we'll say it anyway. That's great. It does not help to shout, I found out. They can hear you see the one that's stiff is me. Oh. <laughs> and what is your name, ma'am? I'm Edel Traut Schober. Edel Traut Schober. Okay, very nice. Nice to meet you this morning. <laughs> Book. That's where those poems are in. <laughs> uh, where is it available? At Amazon and from me. Okay, very good, very good. We're making connections this morning. Good morning, sir. How are good you? Good morning. I'm and, just fine. And tell me your name. My name is Don Smith. Don Smith. Okay, what brings you to the lip reading group? Well, I'm a retired clergyman, and um, I'm fighting to stay in the game. Mm -hmm. um, this class gives me tools for improving my communication. Mm -hmm. Many people don't realize that you don't lose your hearing all at once, mm -hmm. that certain sounds may drop out. One of the things I learned was that the S is the most common sound in the English language. And it's also one of the hardest to hear. Mm -hmm. Imagine hearing a sentence with none of the S's in it. Or, or other, other sounds that are hard to hear. And so in this class, I learn how to fill in the gaps 
put the pieces together and understand what's going on. Excellent. Thank you so much, Don. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Marco Mastro. Marco, very nice to meet you this morning. And, and what do you like best about this course? I like it because it's it's a very social and friendly class here, and I find that uh, learning to communicate is really the most important thing, mm -hmm. and I have learned a few things. I admit I'm a first-year student here, and uh, so I'm at the sort of the beginning stages of learning, mm -hmm. but I... Uh, I find it very, very refreshing to come here and meet with all, all, all our friends here and, and our teacher who's excellent. And uh, so that's basically what I'm here for, just to learn to communicate better. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, woman in red. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm Barbara Mastro. Hi, Barbara. And uh, I found this class through uh, Neighborhood uh, Internet. Mm -hmm. And I received an email from Don telling me about this class. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I are coming together. And we're definitely all here to improve our communication skills. But what makes this so special is Stella, our instructor, yes. and everybody in this class. I mean, we are like friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so as Marco said, it's very refreshing to be here every Monday and Thursday. Okay. I have a question for you. Does this help you when you're watching TV? It does. <laughs> it definitely does. But we have captions on our TV. <laughs> but I'm very aware now when I'm in a group and watching people's uh, learning to listen by watching someone's mouth. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be CIA, I understand. No. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for having a few words to say about why you're taking the class. And Stella, it's just been a great morning for us to, to interact with you and your students here. Is there something you want to share? Yes, I was going to show you a sample audiogram. I know a lot of us who have had our hearing checked by an audiologist get this sheet of paper, and we can't make heads or tails of it. So one of the lectures in the session is how to read your audiogram. This yellow that you see here is called the speech banana, and that's where most of the recurring sounds of our daily speech occur, within this region. Now you see these right circles? Circle, round, right ear. So this is this person's right ear. Look what he misses. Everything above the round circles, he cannot hear. So obviously, he's unable to hear any of the sounds in the speech banana. And his left ear, likewise, is about the same level. So this is what an audiogram looks like. And you can interpret yours when you get it from your audiologist. Do you know there are 27 million Americans with hearing loss? And two-thirds of those men and women are over 70. And guess what? Only 15% of those have hearing aids. I don't know what it is with the hearing aid. I mean, we don't hesitate for a second about getting a pair of glasses, but the hearing aids are just something that people put off and put off or, or leave in the drawer and don't wear. <laughs> and now you should see some of the very latest ones. Some are in different colors, and my friend showed me her latest one. It fits right behind the ear, and it's all full of Swarovski crystal. This bling, bling, bling <laughs> for your ear. So, so she's not trying to hide it. No, she's saying, look at me and look at my hearing not aid a at all. bit. <laughs> so we cover a lot of topics here. Uh, one of my lectures on the anatomy of the ear. This is a, a mold, and I explain all the different parts of the ear and what can go wrong and where and how we can fix it, how a hearing aid will help project the sound waves through your ear. Mm -hmm. We have lectures on the brain. We have lectures on memory. So this is quite a, a cross-section of uh, the topics that we cover in this class. Also, some of the compensatory skills, Deb, you were asking me, uh, what I urge my students to do is prepare yourself for where you're going to be going. Supposing you're going to the doctor's office, well, plan your questions ahead of time. Write them down and then 
Certainly the doctor's not going to ask you, what else would you like a, uh, a roast beef, uh, Mrs. Jones, today? You know the questions that he's going to ask you. Where is, this, where is the pain? What hurts you? What are, what are your ailments? So be prepared for those questions so that you can pick them up on the lips. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to, going to an opera, going to a lecture. And another tip that I give in my oral rehabilitation lectures is if you're going to a family gathering, uh, or a restaurant, and we all know that that's really difficult places for a hearing impaired person. If you're going to a family uh, gathering and there's uh, 20 or 30 of you around to picnic or so, and you can't hear what uh, Aunt Jane is saying over in the corner, find a, a young niece, five or six year old, eight year old, and have them sit next to you. Come and sit next to Auntie Mary, and then they will interpret for you. They, they'll say, oh, did you know, Aunt Mary said so-and-so, and she is your ears. So that's, that's another tip to, to remember. Everybody needs a little help. We all need a little help from our friends. So right. thank you so, one more time, Stella. It's been a great thank, morning here. Thank you, Deb. It was my pleasure. If you'd like to contact Stella and get more information about this lip reading course, we have it right here on the board for you. Welcome to Glendale Community College Lip Reading. And the instructor is Stella Faytek. She's an MS CCC SLP. And the phone number is 818-240-1000, extension 5413. So give her a call if you're interested in the class. And she'll be happy to help you out, I'm sure. There, there are sessions held in spring and fall.